What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 45 of the Having Report podcast with myself, your host, Brad Mines. The price of Bitcoin is just under $60,000, which is up $12,000 US dollars from our last episode just a couple of weeks ago. That's a $15,000 Canadian dollar difference. The next Bitcoin halving event is predicted to land in March of 2024, cutting that daily supply in half and creating another shock to the market. Today, we have Canadian entertainer Spandy Andy on the show. His YouTube channel has millions of views and is guaranteed to bring a smile to your face. What's more is that he's a big time Bitcoiner and has had real life utilization of cryptocurrencies. Let's get to it. Andy, do you mind just giving us an introduction for those people that don't know who you are? All right, I am Spandy Andy, legally changed my name to that. And I spent the last 10 years traveling the world performing, street performing. So my story of Bitcoin is quite unique where I was in countries where I didn't have a bank account, but I needed to take home some of that money that I earned. Earned, and Bitcoin was the solution for me. And this started way back in 2014. Wow. Yeah, so that's my really quick story. Now I'm, because of COVID, I'm not performing. Mm-hmm. I've been at home for a year. I'm actually opening up a dance studio and okay. hoping to be a fitness instructor. Well, hey, uh, I was watching some of your videos yesterday and you, you definitely got the fitness part down. I, I don't know what the move is, but the move where you squat and then you come up with the feet on each way. I don't know that's called oh, yeah but i know i was like yeah, that looks squat. uh the, the, it looks so <laughs> cool i tried it and like my, my legs were like jello after like three after three squats i was just done uh <laughs> Nice. But, I didn't start with that dance move when I first started, but yeah, now I do it full time. A lot of people think it's a Russian dance move, which I mm-hmm. kind of agree with. It goes with their culture. So you're Canadian, correct? Yeah. Which part of Canada are you from? So I was born in Red Deer, Alberta, between Calgary and Edmonton. I'm currently in Calgary right now, okay. and I spent uh, some time in Vancouver as well. So I'm a West Coast guy, but I, I also lived in Mer- at, in Niagara Falls. That's where I met our mutual friend Phil and him and I chat every day about Bitcoin we're obsessed yeah yeah well when I see Phil I hear the stories you some of the topics you guys talk about Phil and I are always discussing sure probably some very similar topics but yeah so when were you in Niagara Falls so 2011 Man. I spent the summer there working at Marineland and then 2012 I actually came uh, out against the park and was at part of the protest and then I moved I was actually in Calgary for for just under four years. It's a it's a beautiful city. I, I love it there. I, I do miss it being so close to the mountains, the Rockies, and yeah. um, you know, just just everything in, in that city is it, I feel like it's a it's a younger culture and people kind of have the similar mentality of very openness and free living. One of the other things uh, that interests me is that you legally changed your name to Spandy Andy, which I didn't re- realize until I started doing more research on you prior to the show. <laughs> uh, so like why did you make that official and like what what's the process like is that an easy process yeah so canada is amazing first off it gives you the freedom to change your name so i love to say that off the bat when i share this story because not all countries allow it i mainly honestly did it more for publicity because i was getting interviewed a lot and the interviewees would always say what's your name for the article and i wanted to promote spandy andy because that's what i was doing they were interviewing me about why i was dancing in the street or doing what I do, making my videos. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to say my name Spandy Andy to them. And so I looked into it and it honestly, it just, it was the cost of about $300 and a criminal background check. And then you can change your name to anything you want. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, it's it's awesome. <laughs> you submit all your old documents. I even had to submit my birth certificate, which was kind of funny. And then I pay like $60 for a new birth certificate. But it's weird because it's like I have a new birth certificate, even though my name was different at birth. But anyway, yeah. you know, yeah, I like did a- it. It'll be on my tombstone. Spandy wow. Andy. and what was your what what was your original name so i was an anthony matthew reimer was my full name and i was called andy all my life so Mm -hmm. i was actually nicknamed spandy andy by someone else uh a different performer saw me and coined me spandy andy and it stuck ever since 
Uh, very cool. Very cool. So I want to dive a little bit into your Bitcoin story a little bit more and how you were first introduced into the space and how did that go and what kind of made you so passionate about the space? Right. Yeah, I'm so passionate about Bitcoin. Like it's my lifeblood. It's pretty ridiculous right now. I, I was even telling people I want to name my child Satoshi. I think that'd be hilarious because <laughs> like Bitcoin's just so important and my child is very important or will be, right? And I already bought a Bitcoin for my future child because I wanted to make sure they were secured and anyway I love Bitcoin for so many reasons I've been studying it full time for five years about last bull market I experienced all the stuff that I'm seeing a lot of people go through now but you know the playing with shit coins trying mm -hmm. to do day trading you know, all the all the stuff, but I actually have a computer background for, in networking, which is a lot of the mm -hmm. like technology behind Bitcoin is how the blocks, you know, connect all the nodes connect together, how the mempool works and how the mm -hmm. blockchain is built with the miners. So just understanding that technology has really given me the conviction to trust I can trust the Bitcoin network more than I can trust anything else right now. I can't trust anybody in this world, mm -hmm. like watching the news, reading on the internet. I can't trust, but Bitcoin math, it's the one thing I can trust. And I just love that because money is mm -hmm. such an important thing. Mm -hmm. You nailed it, right? It's like an open source. And I think you have a unique situation where you're traveling from country to country and it was actually a necessity like i i talk to people sometimes that are naysayers of bitcoin and they don't really realize the utility of it they think it's just a speculation game and there's no actual utility and they don't see the value in it whereas for right. people like yourself it came in like actually really very practical uh yeah. so that's super interesting and i mean it totally makes sense why you know, you'd fall in love with it after it gave you that ability right yeah so when i was in scotland at the edinburgh fringe festival i collected all these coins and i didn't have a bank account in scotland and traveling with a ton of cash and you don't want to go over borders and stuff and so it actually was perfect use case i google you know bitcoin atm i find one in the city go deposit all my money into it it sends the bitcoin onto my phone and mm -hmm. then like when i get home I was like, wait, I don't want to convert this. I'm keeping this. <laughs> and I actually, I went through another situation where I, I used it to play poker online when they blocked poker betting in Canada and the US on the internet. Like I ended up needing Bitcoin for that use case as well. Mm -hmm. So there is a few different use cases I've helped. I've actually helped someone buy drugs with Bitcoin in Texas. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I've helped with the use case all over the place. And I know people are like, uh oh, when they hear that, right? They're like, yeah, Bitcoin's used for criminals. Right. And then it's like, but wait, ask anybody with drugs right now how they paid for it. It's mm -hmm. not going to be Bitcoin, right? We all know that whole, it's the yeah. dollar that's used for all criminal activity and wars. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what's your philosophy when it comes to crypto storage? Are you uh, not your keys, not your coins kind of guy? or? Right. Do you, are you a fan of custodial services? Nice. Good question. I know I <laughs> definitely, I have, my brother lost an entire Bitcoin to Quadriga. Oh, so I'm in Vancouver. Wow. So I used Quadriga too with my brother and he mm -hmm. kept it on Quadriga only because he's not as computer savvy. So he didn't trust himself with Bitcoin keys. Mm -hmm. He actually felt safer using the exchange because it's like a login, right? You mm -hmm. don't have to remember it or lose it. So anyway, he got burned by that. So he's still going through the trials right now. So he lost a full Bitcoin. So that's always going to bother us for the rest of our lives, knowing how Bitcoin's going to end up here, right? Always knowing because he doesn't have a full Bitcoin anymore, but he, he got the confidence to get back in the game and start dollar cost averaging. And I'm so proud of him for doing that because a lot of people are out of the space because they got burnt too. Mm -hmm. I was, so, yeah. yeah, I was one of those people <laughs> Keep too. Your right? keys. <laughs> Keep your keys. There you go. I love it. I love the philosophy. Keep your keys. You know, uh, yeah. But, I yeah. I had Andreas on top of Napalopagus again. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, he was my instructor for one of my courses, and he taught no. that not your keys, not your coins. Oh, really? Can you can you tell me more about that? Like, yeah. So he so teaches you... he teaches a cryptocurrency course through the University of Nicosina, which is 
just outside of Greece, I guess, but mm-hmm. it's an online, you, I took it online and he was the instructor, you know, there was, it was a six month, 12 module, just going through everything with Bitcoin and exams. And he's just such a good instructor. And he really reiterates, not your keys, not your coins, because mm-hmm. it's just full of scams right now in the crypto space. So mm-hmm. it's really scary for the average person. So I understand why they probably need maybe these ETFs and stuff. But as mm-hmm. a, I, tr- I wish everybody could have their own keys. That's the dream, of course course yeah uh well that's great we you know share that philosophy i know there's some big players in this space that i've spoken to said that people have always kind of relied on third parties for big amounts of wealth and i kind of understand that too so at that point i would even still i don't think i'd put all my eggs in one basket anyways if you want to have some of it there sure but you definitely don't want to go one way or the other fully right so are you are you a bitcoin maxi or what's your what, what's your stance on this what's your allocation <laughs> well yeah no exactly i'll be honest i i do hold some other shit coins but of course i'm 95 percent bitcoin but i did like i went back in the day through like litecoin too and it's like nothing against litecoin sure it's a visible blockchain it's all you know it was proof of work mining it was pretty fair distribution and everything and then even the leader you know satoshi light whatever he sold all his coins so yeah it, and like and doge is cool again because it's more natural too so i don't mind and like monero whatever but like i would never store all my like wealth like if i wanted to store my family's wealth for the future for my child like i am doing that i haven't even conceived yet I mean, you use Bitcoin, none of these other coins, right? These other coins are for practice. Like you and me right now, we should, we could send each other Doge and we could like try to create things on the Doge blockchain because it wouldn't cost us like anything. So it's just fun practice. But Mm -hmm. then we come to Bitcoin and now it's like the real deal. And that's why these other coins are kind of, that's the benefit to them I see is for practicing. Right. Yeah. It's like sorting someone else that I talked to said it's like betting on technology, whereas betting on Bitcoins, betting on money. I don't know if that yeah. resonates with you at all with what you're saying. But yeah, I, I'm certainly in the same boat as you in terms of what you mentioned for allocation, like plus 90% there. A little bit of Ethereum, you know, talking about yeah. Ethereum and like things that are happening on Ethereum. Did you see the yeah. recent record breaking NFT digital art yeah, sale? So- <laughs> It's funny, like I hold, I, I hold a bunch of Ethereum, sure. So great. If it goes up, it's great. But it does, it bothers me a little bit how its issuance was mainly to like a pre, it was a pre mine. It wasn't like mm-hmm. a fair thing and stuff. So it, a lot of Ethereum bothers me. But you know, I don't believe it's decentralized either. I can't run an Ethereum node, I run Bitcoin nodes. Mm-hmm. So I have the blockchain right here to verify myself, which I sh- strongly believe in that's the most important thing and ethereum they're like hard forking it again and again and again so as you can see i have all these like quorms Mm -hmm. with it but Mm -hmm. quarrels or whatever they're called but what's otherwise sure it's interesting yes the nfts i would never Mm -hmm. pay that but Mm -hmm. i can't stop others from doing that do you see them hold the digital art pieces holding their value over time Like I know some people buy them and then resell them uh, and make tons of money on them. But is that going to be able, can you keep doing that? So yeah, that's the thing, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. that just proves it's a hundred percent speculation. It's just Mm -hmm. people wanting to make money off of it, Mm -hmm. which is what the whole ICO bubble was of, were you there for the ICOs in 2017? Yeah, I got in, in uh, fall of 2017. So it was just ICO extravaganza when I got in. So, do you remember Crypto Kitties? Yeah. Okay, Crypto Kitties mm. is so perfect. I just realized this the other day. That was the mm. NFT. You could buy the individual kitty graphic. You were the only one that had that unique NFT kitty, and mm-hmm. you could sell it to other people and like do blend the kitties. And then what happened was mm. the Ethereum blockchain because Crypto Kitties got so popular, it got clogged up, which is exactly what's happening now. But instead of it just being kitties, it's it's like kitties and graphics and 
you know, sports right. cards and stuff, but it's actually the exact same thing repeating itself. Hmm. So I looked into Crypto Kitties yesterday and a bunch of the kitties still have values. So to answer your question, <laughs> <laughs> it's still like 160 grand for one of these original kitties. Oh my God. So selling much higher than the original price is what you're saying. Yeah. So oh my God. That's I wild. Don't know. I and know, like I don't have money to throw around like that. No, yeah, I think there's. I mean, when I when I was looking at how many bidder, it didn't seem like there was that many bidders. It seems like there's like a, you know, maybe a few hundred big players betting big yeah. money. What about um, lending services, BlockFi, you know, Binance staking, things like that, where you kind of lend lend the coin. Some of them have their own coin. Yes. Some of them don't. Do you partake in that? And that's yeah. kind of ties in with the custody storage thing as well. Nice. Yeah. You have the best yeah. questions. I love this. Oh, it's thanks, awesome. man. Very practical, <laughs> legit. You know your stuff. It's true. Cause, and you said earlier, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And I mm-hmm. have that same belief when it comes to that. So I am a BlockFi user because I don't put all my Bitcoin there, of course. I just put some. And then my Ethereum and my Litecoin, I was like, well, that might as well sit in BlockFi too. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, again, that I have cold storage Bitcoin locked away. That's like the precious thing. And I think that's the most important thing for everybody to do first. The first Mm -hmm. step is to lock away some Satoshis in cold storage. And then after that, I think you can start doing these like block five play arounds and that. That's my belief. And do you like when you out- make your allocation, when you stack sats, do you use like anonymous service like BTMs or do you use things like Coinbase uh, or Canadian Exchange BitBuy, things like that? Yeah. So I ended up using a lot of legit ones. So the government knows about a certain amount of my purchases, right? <laughs> like, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. gotta be careful here. But yeah, well, they are going <laughs> to be cracking down i mean you already see uh you know i think coinbase like sells analytics to the irs and i'm sure that's yeah. coming down through the cra uh, there's definitely i'm sure pretty big fish out there to fry that are actually you know laundering and, and making cash right. and, and not claim it like me and you we're, we're hodlers right so it's not like we're yeah you know taking out cash and and moving forward on that but just just stacking over time right so you're not really and honestly things. i had a friend in Ontario that had trouble buying online and he's like can you just get me 50 bucks worth and I was like sure he transferred me 50 bucks I bought him 50 because I'm all set and then he said and then afterwards it's like I'm a money transmitter right yeah it was illegal what I did but right yeah no I I, I, I'm a small mm-hmm. fish for sure. I, and I've been put in that scenario myself more than once too. So I know what it's like. I mean, you don't know. Everything's so, so weird right now because I feel like the laws in Canada and I'm pretty sure the US the same way, but you know, it's like a commodity. So if you go from Bitcoin to Ethereum to basic attention token to whatever yeah. else, right? Every single time it's a taxable event, but some people want to use their Bitcoin and crypto to purchase things. So it's like, imagine having to claim your taxes on every single purchase you made with fiat. So like, if you want to treat crypto like fiat, it just doesn't right. work. It just doesn't work with the current laws. Which was like the whole bear market that ensued. Like that was one of the arguments was that because they created that law in the US as well, mm-hmm. they made it so that it's not usable as a currency. Because like you said, you're not every time you make a purchase with it, then mm-hmm. you would have to do the calculations of what the current market rate is mm-hmm. for your taxes and claim and claim the gains on mm-hmm. it and everything, which just makes it unusable as a currency. So So that's why we're really seeing the most important narrative right now is store of value. And then hopefully we can use it as a currency in the future. And then that'll even increase its value even more. Mm -hmm. Do you see, I mean, Coinbase is obviously, I think, you know, the biggest exchange or one of the biggest exchanges out there. Do you see them like they have an upcoming IPO that's been highly anticipated. Is that something that interests you? Yeah, like my dad's a more conservative, traditional investor, I guess you could say. So he's brought that up a few times with me. So we discuss it. But because of our understanding of Bitcoin, I find there's no point of going for the Coinbase IPO because then, then you, the Coinbase has proven that they believe in like the shitcoin casino and they don't even hold that much Bitcoin on their reserve assets like it was shown recently that they have like less than Square who just bought in and stuff so I would rather invest in Square MicroStrategy or these companies that I know hold a lot of Bitcoin over Coinbase. 
Oh, okay. That's something I didn't know that they, they don't really hold a lot of uh, reserves. That's uh... Yeah. So for some reason, they only kept like, I think it was 120 million. It, it's out there in an mm. article. So they're mm. very low on the scale of people that actually own it like themselves on their balance sheet, right? In their treasury or what all these corporations are doing now. That's pretty interesting. What do you, do you have any price predictions for the end of the year? <laughs> um, yeah, right? I know. Like, it's awesome. Like I follow probably a lot of the same stuff you do. Like I'm yeah. full on in it. So I can yeah. repeat a lot of the fun things as everybody else says, but I, I'm prepared for there to be a big dump. Like I'm excited for like the big crash that scares everybody um, because it's inevitable there's going to be a scare. I don't know when it'll be, but you know, I think a hundred, like everybody right now, they're just like, Oh, well, it's got to go to a hundred. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe right before a hundred K we have that a 30% or a 40% correction. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for that. Cause I, I do play a little bit with the derivatives Oh, okay. So I love to see, I love to see the panic in the market. So I don't know exactly like mm -hmm. Bitcoin. It depends if it goes up really fast, then, you know, there's a really strong crash. But if we actually go sideways for the next five months, then we created a really good base. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those two things it, are very important. And then that I can help make my decisions as I go. So I have no yeah. idea, but yeah. I think the bottom is where Tesla bought at 30,000, right? I think you think that's, that's where they bought. That's okay. So you see like after hitting the, after hitting the high, which we, what we're thinking like near the end of the year here, early yeah. 2022, sort of like 2017, is that you see something mimicking like? Yeah. So say, it, yeah, exactly. It goes up to 200 K. Everybody's finally like, oh my God, we can't miss out on Bitcoin. If it went from a hundred to 200, of course it's going to a million. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Sell the house. Yeah. Sell everything. <laughs> Let's do it. We're going Bitcoin. And they oh, said yeah. it on the news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's <laughs> and yeah. then, and then mm -hmm. it's like they finally do it and the crash back down to like 30 or 50k. And it's like oh man, I hope it doesn't go back down that low after the high. <laughs> I feel like it, hopefully it'll settle like a little bit higher than that. Do, do you have any like I know, yeah, of course we follow the same, you know, similar people um yeah, and sources. Stock to flow. Stock to flow. Do you have any do you have any favorite uh crypto Twitter follows? Uh you know Dan Held is going strong with the mm -hmm. um double bear market, or what does he call it? The super cycle. Oh yes, Bitcoin super cycle. That's exciting. Yes, I like so hearing that's that. Called for. Yeah, I know. Like <laughs> truthfully, like I plan to use BlockFi to take out a loan against my crypto. That is now my ex plan. And that wasn't available until like 2017. So that just shows that the market super mm -hmm. cycle thesis could play an effect because now all the Bitcoiners don't need to sell their Bitcoin to get cash. And like some of these guys are such they made such big gains that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if they only get 50% of the collateral when they're doing lending, they're still very comfortable. And then they can buy back their Bitcoin anyway, or let it go. You know, what do you, what do you think the most exciting thing happening in the crypto space, like outside of Bitcoin, like, or, or maybe the most important company? Yeah, I know that it, I love, I'm thankful for the exchanges because it is hard to get Bitcoin still even kind of, mm -hmm. believe it or not, even, you know, someone that wants to buy one Bitcoin today, if they're like, fine, I want one. It's like, um, all right, well, wire transfers like huge fees two percent at least so say bitcoin's mm -hmm. at 72 grand like it is right now you need mm -hmm. to send 75 grand in at least yeah so like people don't realize all a lot of this stuff it's actually even still hard to get bitcoin and so i'm thankful for the exchanges for facilitating that yeah purchase because without them how do we get it right and they push user adoption massively right i mean yeah because like think mm -hmm. if you had to go meet someone you're in saint Catharines. yeah so then you'd have to like go downtown there or drive to toronto and no. then take cash and send mm -hmm. stuff no you don't want to do that down here <laughs> <laughs> You got the new train though. It should be easy. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. No, I mean, that's, yeah. that's the worst case scenario, right? I mean, people, especially with large amounts of money, I mean, uh, you can yeah. do it with the, with the, with the BTMs. I don't mind the BTMs, but I, I feel like regulation is going to be coming down on those because there's just, you can just go there and buy, right? And there's no identification yeah. needed. Yeah. It's awesome. Like Bitcoin is, as long as you follow the rules with Bitcoin, which I know a lot of Bitcoiners hate, but you know, it, it works. Mm -hmm. the governments will accept it and then it's even better you know like it's it's okay yeah. don't use it for money laundering it's fine right just use yeah. it as an investment because it really is the best way to store your wealth like mm -hmm. and that's allowed and that's what matters right so all these nfts it's like it is cute and sure you could get the rare pokemon nft and mm -hmm. yay like in the future mm -hmm. you could pass it down to someone or sell it yeah. And that is fine, but why take the risk if it depends if how important like securing your wealth is. What are you doing when you're not researching Bitcoin and dancing? <laughs> what uh, there's no other time left. That's it's it. Like, okay. Well, that's a good Bitcoin, answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. You, you know the levels of Bitcoin. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. dived down the rabbit hole, right? Yeah, well, as much as I can with uh, the technical understanding that I have, like I'm not uh, a programmer by any means. I've taken like introductory to like Python and, you know, oh, a little good. bit more, a little bit more uh, tech savvy than maybe the average bear. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> it's it's very complex space. I mean, I have some books. I do have Mastering Bitcoin by Andreas. But I yes, mean, unless I'm unless I'm like like right. really focusing for a long time that's a full-on course meal right there uh, exactly and then do you know Safid Hadeen's The Big yes. Standard have I you read that I, I just bought that book because I keep hearing people saying it should be a fundamental reading for Bitcoiners yes uh, I've read other I have other Bitcoiner Bitcoin books uh, but nice. I'm I've actually just starting that one are you, you is that one of your favorites yeah that was one of my that was my first and it was the one that got mm -hmm. my dad who's in his 70s because mm -hmm. It doesn't even mention Bitcoin for the first six chapters. So it's the education piece on the history of money and mm -hmm. how money is a technology that humans have always created. And this is our latest version of it. So that was like such so different than the other book you just spoke of, the Mastering Bitcoin, which is 100% mm -hmm. programming. So it's mm -hmm. not the history of money whatsoever. So like, yeah, there's so many facets. That's exactly mm -hmm. what I mean. And they're important to learn them all. But I think the, the history of money one and the Bitcoin standard, it really shows you how important it is, the Bitcoin standard and how yeah. exciting of mm -hmm. a thing it is. Yeah. yeah. And well, a lot of people say too, that before teaching people about Bitcoin, sometimes you just teach them what money is. So the Bitcoin yeah. standard is perfect for, for those types of people that don't understand the current financial system, never let alone yeah. <laughs> trying to learn what Bitcoin is. So crazy. Trying to understand mm. the current monetary system that the governments mm. are doing. It's like more confusing than Bitcoin in a way. Like mm -hmm. yes. the, the bonds and monetary oh, yeah. theory and mm -hmm. yield and treasuries and well, like holy when, crap when you think about it like bitcoin replaces a lot of the bank's products that they currently offer right so in a way i would say bitcoin is much a simpler financial system transparent it's not going to change yeah. like with the with the laws uh and regulations right like people yeah. banks will, will lobby the government to go one way or another it changes over the decades bitcoins there's a fundamental core there that's not going to change very unlikely to change anyways another good one that i read that uh i just found very interesting which just kind of helped me understand the history of some of the bitcoin ogs like uh the winkleboss brothers was bitcoin billionaires nice i want to read yeah. that i haven't read that yeah. i downloaded that so. oh did you it is it's a it's a really fun read you learn like the relationship how eric Voorhees and charlie shrem and the winkleboss brothers and how they're all like working together back nice. in the day it's a cool little history story rather than i find like a lot of bitcoin books are like you know what bitcoin is like kind of over and over again with different ways of saying it which are good and need but like bitcoin billionaire is a little bit different which is kind of nice too nice um, okay i'll for sure do that one next thanks yeah yeah it's like i said it's a uh, it's fun to get it's easy to read through because it's a fun book to read yeah because charlie mm -hmm. shrem has a podcast too that i like to listen mm -hmm. to and he Untold shares stories. some of those yeah and yeah. ends up how he ended up in prison from bitcoin and ran the exchange out mm -hmm. of new york and oh, the book may i don't that's not really a spoiler but like it is kind of eye-opening to like what charlie shrem was like back when he was i think like 22 years old trying to run like 
you know, the biggest Bitcoin exchange in the world. Uh, it's yeah. it's quite interesting. And and the Winkle Boss brothers who are like, you know, the Harvard state guys are trying right. to rely on this, you know, on this type of person, right? Who's just coming into all this money at once and just living that rock star life, you know, oh, just cool. smoking, yeah. smoke, smoking the whole shit ton of weed. So <laughs> it's, it's really yeah. fun. Yeah. You know, I, the Winkle Boss, they're so uptight, but they have mm. been behind Bitcoin for so long that it, mm-hmm. they, I respect them big time yeah yeah and, and roger ver too like it's interesting how he's always been like one way and he's always stayed that one certain way with that philosophy of destroying taxes and just go yeah, libertarian <laughs> yes yeah so yeah. It- what has that affected you politically of bitcoin getting involved with it absolutely man so i would say after coming out of poli sci brock i was pretty and i am pretty left-leaning on a lot of issues but the Bitcoin and libertarian aspect uh, just made me realize, I guess maybe some things can't be changed. I don't know. I don't know if it's good or bad or some of the things have changed, but it definitely changed my philosophy and I have more libertarian uh, ideals that kind of combine with my, with my current ones. Like I love, like I love Bernie Sanders. Like I think, <laughs> I, I don't know if you like it or not, but I think some of the ideas yeah, he brings out are, are awesome. And like, some people call that radical left. I, I don't, I, but I think the ideal system is no taxes, but I don't think the elite can, can basically rape its citizens for decades and decades and then not give anything back to them at the end of the day to kind of rebalance. I think redistribution of wealth is healthy for a society, whether obviously done in t- through taxation is not ideal. It'd be better if it could happen more organically. It's through, happening through yeah. Bitcoin more naturally right now. Like exactly. Transfer of wealth, right? And that's, and that's what really hit me deep and actually you know bitcoin oops, bitcoin cash aside one of the quotes that really made me passionate about bitcoin was roger ver and how bitcoin can undermine every government's ability to wage war and yeah yeah that really spoke to me because it's it's true right you can't you yeah. can't just print endless money to do whatever you want there's accountability now exactly dude it's so yeah. huge i have a crazy little thing i don't i can talk forever but i have another really important story that bitcoin connects with me with please do uh, w- yeah so so, uh, my grandparents are Holocaust survivors. So they came wow. to Canada after losing everything and like both their families were murdered, but they both survived in a hospital after concentration camp and then ended up coming to Canada and starting their new life. So they had the stories that they tried to bring some of their wealth with them when their houses were being, you know, taken away from them and they how they had to swallow like diamonds or gold or anything they could. So if Bitcoin was available for them at that time, it could have been used as mm. like a, to protect their family wealth and store it and then bring it across like the border with them yes. or even hold it in their head for as long mm-hmm. as they need to. So yes. like that was such a, I was like, oh my God, that could have been like that's so a tool a, for mankind huge tool so you have two personal stories where kind of bitcoin uh touches you personally there but yeah and, and you know what on that point just looking back at older people that could have used it and the people that labored for their entire lives while they could have stacked sats for five in today's yeah. world uh i feel my heart bleeds for them because <laughs> this sucks if you were born in today's age and you have the tools that were available today you know to take advantage of it right and i'm jealous of people that are younger than oh. me that are you know stacking stats at 20 years old because yeah. these people are going to be financially free at 25 years old and just live the best lives ever so uh, it is awesome. It's crazy yeah. though. Like I'm, I go to Mexico a lot, and I I want to help the people there, like that are my friends, and like mm-hmm. they're so far from being able to use Bitcoin. Like they don't yeah. even actually use electronic. It's very much peso mm-hmm. to peso in all the shops, mm-hmm. right? And like even ATMs are a pain in the ass there with like huge fees. So they try not mm-hmm. to even touch the system at all. But they're just all using pesos that are getting devalued Mm -hmm. and it's really sad like how can i help them with bitcoin they're living day to day how can they stack sats yeah it's not realistic well i think even showing them the door is super important and i'm sure you do that all the time just by saying you know wearing that t-shirt even you know what i mean you're showing people the door and i think that's important to note is that you can't take people from the start to the finish line you can kind of just show them the the start and they can they have to kind of take things into their own hands at the end of the 
date. Yeah. But I mean, I'm very, very willing to help if there be people are willing to learn. Yeah. Most Bitcoiners I know are like, for sure, I'll help you buy Bitcoin, right? Totally. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Bitcoin's like, it's such a teacher. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, mm-hmm. will all Bitcoiners want to help each other? And like, none of them really have time for shit coiners. Most of the big ones, they're like, mm-hmm. even Satoshi wrote, like, if you don't get it, I don't have time to explain it. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of these guys, they can't just keep arguing the electricity thing. Like we're on Zoom using electricity and they have the Zoom corporate towers that they built. And like, what are we calculating electricity use for everything? My last episode, I had a a guy who works for uh, with a mining pool and we talked a lot about electricity and Bitcoin consumption. And he says, there, I forget what the name of the scale, but it's some, some Russian study measures society based on the amount of energy that they use. And the more energy being used is actually better, he says, for one. So he's like, I don't argue, he's like, I don't argue that Bitcoin ha- uh, takes more energy use if it were not to exist. But he's like, you got to look at the alternative system that we have now. And there's a lot of externalities in that system. Whereas, you know, the, whatever the script for the uh, MasterCard may only be, you know, a very small file compared to Bitcoin, but there's a lot of other things that go into play uh, in the major financial system that we have. So that was pretty eye opening to me and just, you know, nice. That's a really important one that people are Mm going to need. I told my dad last bull market that the electricity thing was going to come because it it Mm -hmm. did pop up then as well. So, Mm-hmm. A lot of these arguments are repeats as well. Right. And it is good. That, yeah, yeah. People yeah. need to be skeptical. Oh, for sure. For sure. There's always going to be someone. And uh, also it's a driver for renewable energy too, right? Yeah. Because it makes exactly. people become creative in how they get their energy from. So uh, here in Alberta, they're going to yeah. try to do that. The flaring is a really popular yes. one people have heard of. You can't use the energy any other way. Now mm-hmm. they can monetize it. These companies in Alberta are suffering because of oil prices. Mm-hmm. Now they can actually make a little extra off these flares. So mm-hmm. explain that to people. It's yeah. yeah, it doesn't cost anything to mine that because it's already electricity that was there anyway. The, the gentleman I had on last show, show talk, spoke a lot about that too. Nice. Andy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it open for you for any final <laughs> comments about crypto, maybe for newcomers or just words of wisdom for all my listeners and then maybe just let them know where to where to follow you well thanks so much for having me this is awesome love talking bitcoin so i can't shut up about it i'm glad you finally just cut me off (laughs) (laughs) i could keep going i would tell everybody do your own research because like yeah you're like don't you always say don't listen to me i talk to experts and stuff that is good i think we should all be humble and bitcoin's like so much bigger it's like God, you can't yes. understand it all, right? Right. right. So, so be humble to it mm-hmm. and come in here wanting to learn and mm-hmm. try your best. And yeah, Bitcoiners will help you. There's endless resources. There's no excuses in Bitcoin. It's you're the only one holding yourself back. So get out there and learn. Get your first Satoshi. All right. And where can we follow you? <laughs> and yeah, follow me. I am Spandy Andy on all the social medias. You'll see all my videos. I don't even talk about Bitcoin in any of my stuff. Bitcoin has changed my life but I don't like arguing it over and over with people so I feel like I just said they have to be willing and want to do it Mm -hmm. themselves so yeah check me out tweet me at Spandy Andy Bitcoin and we can talk and well I can't wait to celebrate when we break a thousand what are we at? yeah we we gotta check it I feel like if it's a new all time high (laughs) we gotta do something not quite no we're right there I'm just uh, right, refreshing here. Where are we at? Double check. It looks like we had a slight dip. Oh, Should we buy. smash buy? buy? Smash the buy. <laughs> I'll buy if you buy. <laughs> nice. See my, my oh, Apple Oh, nice. That's beautiful. I have the price yeah. is always on the front right oh, there. Oh, that's super cool. It just came up and said Brad Mines Podcast, too. That's awesome. Uh, oh, like, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I, uh, there you go. I want to get. Yes. Yes. We're on, we're on. Um, I, I also want to get one of those clocks that just displays the Bitcoin Ooh, price. The block. 
Oh, yeah. the price. Oh, yeah, is there a price clock? Yeah, yeah, there's a what? few of them. I forget the website, but I follow them on Twitter. Next yeah. time I come across them, I'll definitely tag you in it. Um, yeah, send me it. Thanks for your time, Andy. It's nice meeting yeah, you. Yeah, thanks I, for I, having me. Thank you all for listening to episode 45 of the Having Report podcast. Show us some love by liking, following, and subscribing to the show, and we'll see you back next time.